Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another CCP beta video. In this one we're going to be talking about Valkyrie. She is coming into the contest very soon. I'm very excited about this character. She has a very unique play style. She takes some elements of skill champions that we have known and loved in the past. Most notably Masakure with the hitting of the block. She has a couple safety nets to make that a little bit more uh, routine when you're playing her. She can manipulate her combo meter like some other champions, Black Cat and Squirrel Girl come to mind. And then additionally, because she is as Guardian and there is sort of a cosmic element to her, she does proc a number of buffs, uh, most notably it's Pierce and Bulwark, which is very similar to Hulkling. So it's nice to see another character who is having those types of abilities. Pierce is, is looking to be sort of one of those new game mechanics that is pretty cool, so we love to see that. Uh, we're just gonna really briefly go through her abilities, and then I'm gonna show you them in action. We're gonna do two quick fights for damage, which are gonna be quite impressive, and then we're gonna do some utility, jumping into Act 7 into a pretty annoying Paradox lane with a Human Torch followed by Juggernaut. And we're going to see how her play style, when she's under a little bit of stress, how it holds up and if she's able to get the fights down. So first of all, the signature ability seems pretty important, especially to get it at high sig. Most notably because when you have at least one pierce effect, it is rounded up, by the way. So you do want to max it out so that it is exactly one. Then unstoppable opponents react as if they aren't. So basically it's like having a permanent slow on them. It's not affected by class disadvantage and it doesn't rely on a debuff. Obviously you do need to have pierce effects, which are buffs, uh, but unlike slow, it's not a debuff. So it's just another way to deal with unstoppable. This has some pretty big implications for stuff like abyss or against any other annoying node. You just completely bypass it. Uh, essentially, all you need to know about her combo is that if you end with the light, her combo starts going down. If you end with a medium, it starts going up again. When it's going down, it turns blue, so it's a very easy visual cue to know if it's going up or down. And then you want to be going up and above uh, the threshold of 10 hits or 20 hits or you know multiples of 10. And when you do that, you either get a pierce or a bulwark buff. If you're going up, it's a pierce. If you're going down, it's a bulwark. You want to build as many of these as possible. And then essentially the damage rotation, um, at least according to Dorky Dave, it usually involves landing a heavy, which puts the intimidate debuff on them, just like Hulkling. Then they're going to get really passive and you can throw a special two into their block with hopefully lots of pierce. And that's going to be doing some red damage in the form of instant bleeds. So you do need to be aware if they are bleed immune, you're going to do less damage. And then the pierce is just going to be doing lots and lots of damage as well, just as white numbers. Um, you get a passive fury as you do this. Uh, and it does pause the effects as well, which is very helpful. If you're running low on your pierce, then the special two will pause them for the duration of the attack, which is always nice. I almost never find a reason to use the special three, but maybe in long matchups. And then additionally, the special one usually comes up in the rotation. Um, it gives you some evade charges, which are really nice. You can spam hits into the block and then be completely safe if they retaliate. So that's an interesting little safety net. Additionally, um, if you throw the special one in block, you will get that evade. And the final nice safety net thing is the special two creates enough distance that I think basically 99 times out of 100, like I never got hit. You're going to be far enough away from them that you are not going to get punished for hitting their block. So that was one thing I was worried about because Masakre has the miss mechanic after he throws the special two as his safety net. But this one, it's all about the animations and how much distance you create and she's totally fine. So with that, we'll get a little bit more into her abilities as we go through her damage rotation. And we're going to go to one of our favorite quests to figure out exactly how much damage she can deal and how realistic it is. Let's take a look. 
Okay, so we're going to take a look at a few fights with no nodes just to look at ideal scenarios and the damage rotation. I'm basically copying this from Dave's spotlight video. So what he recommended was getting to six combo at the start, so we land two more hits. Now we're going to do a light ending combo, which crosses 10, gives us a pierce, and reverses the combo. Then we do medium medium into special one, which puts us at 19 hits. And now we're just going to alternate light ending and medium ending. Note that because of these dormant evade charges, you can just hit them into the block and that will manipulate your combo meter and then the evade will save you. That really helps you to stay aggressive. So now we have three of each buff. We're gonna throw the heavy to get the intimidate and then do a combo into block followed by a special two that gives us four pierce effects and that is plenty to get Deadpool down. No issues there. So you can see that in sort of a vacuum when you can you know just sort of parry and combo freely, uh, it's very, very easy to just get to that one special two and then you are all set. This fight has a little bit more health, so we're gonna see if the one special two is able to get him down. We start the same way with just three hits and then another three hits. I think the Petrify Mastery helps a little bit because it gives them less power when they are stunned. There we go, we've got our two pierces and our one bulwark. We're sitting at 19 hits. Now we're gonna do another light ending combo. And notice, again, he's being passive, so we just hit into the block. We have the dormant evade charge to help us if we need. Right there, the evade saves us. So I really, really like that mechanic. It just sort of allows you to continue to build power and build your buffs. And then we're getting close, but not quite there. We don't have any more evade charges, so I'm just trying to find a place to land this heavy attack. Uh, don't get the reparry there, uh, but we're okay. Here we go, landing a medium, followed by a heavy. He holds block, we do a full combo into block. And again, we get the four pierce effects. When you throw that heavy, it converts them into passives with higher potency. And then we're in really, really good shape. 37 hits for like, what was that? 300,000 health, not bad at all. So before we get into this act seven lane, I am just going to pause it for a moment. The reason I pick lanes like this is that, you know, in, in act seven and presumably act eight, Paradox is just part of the deal and Paradox lanes traditionally are known for kind of throwing you off because you have to complete certain actions and then manage the Paradox charges. And so I wanted to pick a lane where I thought she could handle it and there are some pieces of utility that she has uh, that can specifically counter these two fights. But I wanted to just see if we have, you know, like another sort of limiting factor, which is the Paradox node, if she was going to still be able to freely land the combos and access the damage like we wanted. So with that, we're going to go into this fight and I'll explain it a little bit as it's happening. Alrighty, so the way that we build Paradox is on knockdowns in this fight. So this is not typical Valkyrie style by any means, but I am going to try to land about six heavy attacks uh, because the way that we lose our Paradox is by throwing special attacks. So especially if we're throwing special attacks into his block, then we won't get the benefit of the knockdown and our Paradox can get too low. And then the scaling effect of the Paradox is that our debuffs last longer. So that's going to actually help us in a couple ways. Right there you saw how long that stun lasted because we are, including, uh, we are increasing the duration. But additionally our Intimidate debuff is going to be doing a really good job as well. So now that we have enough Paradox we're going to kind of start the entire rotation over again. But it's sort of like plus 10 combo. So you saw instead of 19 we were at 29. We're just going to keep alternating combo building the same thing and that was really nice to have that really long stun and now we have to just bait another special this also has counter strike on it so he has the potential to go unblockable and in fact right there we had to dex enough times that he does go unblockable so this is just another part of this node we have to wait this thing out it is 15 entire seconds of unblockable Fortunately, he doesn't have power, so we can just kind of get through this, and then we can continue. So now we're going to land a heavy. I just wait a second because that stun is so long. I don't want him stunned. 
and of course he runs into us even though he has the intimidate but we barely get this off while our passive pierces were still active they're still paused we're just spamming hits into his block because of this long intimidate and boom look at how much damage that is i feel like i was doing about 20k per hit with that passive fury and with the three passive pierce effects and then the one active pierce effect, all those direct bleeds, everything, pretty incredible amount of damage to be going through like 400k health that fast. And now this fight was probably the favorite one that I recorded because we are gonna showcase the awakened ability. All we need is one pierce buff and then we are completely able to bypass unstoppable. So we're able to get to the one Pierce buff right there. So now if he throws specials, it's no big deal. Uh, we're kind of right where we want him. Uh, you can see there, it's just like having a slow debuff on him. So who cares? He's unstoppable. It has zero effect on us. So we can just continue to build uh, right there. I didn't want to keep going into the block. I wanted to kind of build my own power. So we're pretty much built up at this point. We have all of our buffs. Uh, we just kind of have to get to our big special two and just note that we cannot stun him when he's unstoppable. That is one thing that, that uh, it doesn't remove the unstoppable buff right there. Again, I wait for that parry stun to go away. Now we've got the intimidates and this is going to be hitting so hard into the block with our four passive pierce effects. He stays very passive. Um, there he's tried to combo us but you know we still have all these pierces we have five pierces now and I'm just gonna throw this special one into his block and that's the end of him so just an example of an alternate play style based on the paradox nodes that we have so finally what are my concluding thoughts on this champion I think just like so many of these 2022 champions she is gonna be a blast to have on your roster she does solve a few problems like the unstoppable counter is excellent it's something that means she can actually do damage in the abyss and against you know we saw juggernaut but other annoying unstoppable nodes that alone is huge she does have a little bit of a non-damaging debuff shrug uh, but it's not as reliable as someone like elsa bloodstone uh, because it does rely on having some of the bulwark so you know going up against like um, long distance relationship or something like that she wouldn't be my first choice but she will be able to purify some uh, debuffs that way which means that she would be pretty decent for path four in alliance war depending on who the attack or who the defender is there but yeah, man, just the block damage and, and the easiness of the flow and the safety net of the evades and the way that special two works, it's a very, very good kit. I think my only complaint is that sometimes the pierce debuffs or the passives just don't last quite long enough and you're rushing to get off a special two to pause them. Uh, so, you know, there is an alternate way of playing her where you actually don't use the heavy attacks at all. And I'm going to show you've seen a little bit in the background here of some of the Star Lord gameplay. In this one, I'm mostly just keeping my three buffs and just hitting the block and throwing special twos that way. As soon as you do the Intimidate, then you convert them to passives and then you have to go back to building up again. But you'll see that even just having the active buffs is more than enough and then you don't have to worry about building anymore. They're just basically permanent and they're gonna do a bunch of damage as well. So you know, I do wanna kind of encourage people that if you can land the heavy, that's great. But if you're in a situation where you need to do a lot of damage for a long time and not worry about rebuilding up or landing a heavy, if they're stun immune or have limber or something like that, you're actually going to be totally fine as well. Throw on top of that that she has incredible prestige and her awakened ability also can help with stuff like encroaching stun. If she's maxed out and you have just one bulwark, then she's stun immune. That is pretty massive um, to be like completely stun immune. You know, like Hercules and Apocalypse can be at times. It's it's pretty pretty awesome because you can see it's very easy to get at least one of each buff. So yeah, I think she's quite good. I do think that you do need to practice her. She definitely takes some skill. She may not be a go-to problem solver, but she's definitely going to be an amazing general quester with really good damage and just a blast to play. 
kind of like some of the other champions that were released this year, like Black Cat and Hulkling and Scorpion. They just seem like really well-rounded champions that can do damage and you know have an alternate play style that allows you to bypass some things and have a really good time. So that's where I stand on Valkyrie. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.